Hi everyone, it's Stu from 3B and today I'm going to be talking about how hackers find your passwords to your bank, your accounts, your social media, anything really. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that the, yesterday um, I discovered that I was the victim of a, of a, of a, of a small hack on uh, some of my accounts and it was an account that they managed to then use on my email, believe it or not. It wasn't my Gmail, thankfully, so it was a smaller email account that I didn't use very much. But they then used that to then gain access to some other online um, sort of accounts, but nothing huge. Um, I think they did manage to spend about £40 on something, but I managed to claw that back and see where they were spending it. Uh, but thankfully, with how a lot of these um, sort of account systems work online where they have a credit card they don't show the whole credit card but they were able to buy some things um, interesting they'd put their own uh, an address on there so uh, <laughs> we will see where that leads anyway um, I wanted to do a video on how uh, hackers find your passwords and it is actually pretty interesting how they do that so we'll start there's sort of 10 of them so far that I've discovered um, so we'll start off with number one so number one is the infamous sort of dictionary attack um, basically all they use is sort of words that are found in the dictionary either singularly or together and those are sort of common used words together so um, stew the man or you know odd things like that so they'll keep trying variations um, upon those sort of similar themes so say for instance if you work in IT and you're the admin guy you may be putting your um, uh, username as the admin guy you know sort of so it uses things from a dictionary that are commonly put together in relation to in context to the to to the to either the, your job or the service that you're using online so that's a very common a way of doing it and they just use this software and just do it over and over and over until they get a hit so that's number one number two is the brute force attack now this is a bit more aggressive and sounds a bit more aggressive <clears throat> so simply instead of using words um, they use sort of non non dictionary words so they'll use variations of sort of alphanumeric uh, variations that are very common there are a huge amount of lists available where they can just track sort of commonly used variations of alpha and numeric um, sort of nonsense that they that most people sort of tend to use so common ones are, uh, <laughs> the worst ones to use obviously are Q, uh, Q W E R T Y um, you know S D F G H and so on all those sort of things are either reverses of that or variations of things that com people commonly use and then it sort of goes and extrapolates that beyond by using um, sort of AASSDD and all those sorts of things easy things for people to remember because they can see them visually on the keyboard um, and because they're next to each other so they'll use very common um, terms first and then they'll sort of vary them out to, to be more sort of random so that's number two that's the brute force attack and it needs a lot of computer power so sometimes they'll use software that allows them to use their uh, gpu their graphics card or even um, uh, uh, offline sort of um, mining banks like bitcoin mining banks where they can use that sort of combined processing power of those uh, sort of number crunching things and they'll instead of using them to mine they'll use them to number crunch or, or data crunch these brute force attacks number three is the rainbow attack uh, n not as pretty as that sounds uh, not that attack is pretty um, but yeah basically there are um, tables um, uh, that are sort of basically hashes um, that are 
pre-computed that are available on the dark web and these are huge enormous tables and um, they're, they're massive things and they're, they're freely available on the dark web and um, they again much like the brute force attack require an awful lot of computational power so they'll use sort of uh, either their GPU or uh, combined uh, mining power of, of sort of the hash power of of, of, um, of mining uh, offline mining services and things like that where they can use that computational power to to go through these enormous tables to then use those um, known sort of common hashes that would then be used um, as passwords or possible passwords by password generating systems to then use that on um, you know sort of like a bit like a, a, a constant sort of stream of these things that it will keep trying and it will use those sort of initially with also a dictionary attack to find out your username and then possibly like a rainbow attack taking these hash tables and then trying those um, as, as the password um, so that's that's quite a, a common way for more of a sort of a professional hacker that would use that um, to gain access to your inf information. Number four, the most common one um, that we see a lot of and is reported a lot by the media is, of course, course, sound like Sean Connery there, is of course phishing. Um, hugely common. Uh, basically, you know, it's it's a means of trying to present themselves in a particular way that gives you the impression that it's a website that's asking for information from you uh, and it's actually not that website so for instance common ones have been sort of PayPal uh, banking organizations um, social media and things like that where it will say um, you know it will give the impression that the email is actually from that organization and even go to you'll go to a website and if you're not paying attention to the URL uh, where you would normally enter the domain um, you would see possibly that the domain the URL is slightly off it doesn't look like Facebook it may be uh, Facebook dot some other website dot com forward slash and then something else so it's always never facebook.com forward slash then something else because that would signify that it's actually on Facebook's server. Uh, what what these people have done is they've set up a subdomain within a, within a domain that they own. It's obviously not Facebook, but um, they then present the website that looks identical to, web, to, to Facebook or PayPal or the banking login system or whatever and gives the impression that it is those people. And because people are very busy, we're very busy in our lives, we tend not to pay too much attention to where it's taking us. And this is where phishing attacks work. They'll then grab your um, your login information and your login and then it will say there was an error. And so it may make you do it a couple of times to make sure it is that information. And then they'll say there's some error with the system, you know, we'll come back later or something like that. So not to sort of frighten you off to give you the idea that it, there's something's wrong. So phishing is hugely common. We see it an awful lot. It's the key thing that people, one of the most common ways that people get caught these days because we're so busy, we just assume is actually from the website that we're working with. Number five is social engineering. Um, social engineering is 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 pretty clever. I admire the 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 gusto to do this, the guts to do this. Basically, all it means is you ring up, um, and this is quite common too. You you get them. We get them a lot in the UK, and I know you get them quite a lot in the US where you'll get somebody ringing up saying you you have you have a problem with your internet or there's a problem with x y and z and they'll talk to you a little bit explaining there's a problem and then they'll start to sort of eke out either your username and or password um, most people are pretty aware of what these people are trying to do but again if you're busy or you're not aware of how these things work 
sometimes you know you get sucked into this and you're caught off guard and you're actually giving information that allows them to access whatever it is they're looking to access so it could be anything from um, common ones that I've had are Microsoft calling me <laughs> oddly um, saying you know we need there's a problem with your computer we need to access blah 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 and usually what they're trying to do is gain access to your computer which of course with us these days having all our information on computers um, a huge amount of personal information and so on financial information it's it's a gold mine for them so they'll then look to try and copy um, the information that they can um, whilst they have access to to your computer so that's that's quite a common one the social engineering one number six is uh, another common one we tend to see is malware malware is where essentially you've 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 say you've downloaded something a lot of these tend to be on torrents um, torrents is uh, you know sort of where you can download uh, whatever you want uh, most a lot of it is slightly dodgy um, I've I've I, te I do not touch torrents um, because you don't know what's embedded in them so for instance a good example would be say somebody wants to instead of paying for a bit of software or an album or whatever they'll go onto some torrent website and search for say Ed Sheeran they'll get that software and it'll be a zip uh, say you get that that file and it'll be a zip they'll they'll uncompress that zip and it'll actually um, then say have a, an exe file in there and it'll say this is the file to open up to decompress the entire Ed Sheeran catalog and then people go oh that's brilliant I'll have that so you do that and then what it does it then runs a, a program uh, on your on your PC that you didn't know was running and it runs in the background and that's just one example of it there's many millions of examples that that work where you've you've got some kind of software another one is when you're installing some kind of software that's not completely trusted and uh it's got some uh hidden code in there that um basically is 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 malicious and um which is basically where malware comes from malicious software um and it, it it's it's false representation representation of that software you're not actually downloading the software you think you are you're actually downloading a very nasty malware virus which then gets through either that way or another common way is through browsers where you you, you um, accept certain code that runs on browsers uh, that's a very common way and then they can see and they have key loggers that will then see what you're typing um, so there's lots of different ways um, best ways to look out for those is first of all don't download very dodgy software make sure your Chrome browser or your browser is up to date and you're not in allowing the installation of some very dodgy scripts um, the other way is to make sure that you're running virus software and um, that, that will look for malware uh, if you've got Windows um, it's Windows 10 especially has all that built in so make sure that's up to date and running so you won't get caught that way so that's number six number seven is offline cracking um, sounds disgusting and slightly painful basically all this is is we've all heard of um, websites big websites being compromised where they've managed to get uh, the personal information of those that use those websites usually it's in the hundreds of thousands or even millions I think it was Yahoo it was the, the several million people got hacked or their information stolen from Yahoo um, that information is then available on the dark web and then basically they would go through that um, one by one or randomly and seeing if any of those work and then if they do they've gained access to to whatever say for instance your Yahoo email next one is shoulder surfing surfing <laughs> shoulder surfing um, pretty 
a, a pretty simple technique really basically uh if um somebody will pretend the ballsy approach would be somebody going into an organization pretending to say be a cleaner or whatever or just even just some organizations you can just walk into you know walk around the offices because they're so busy people don't even care and you're wandering around and um you know you're peering over people logging in into things and because they're behind you you can't really see um, a lot of the time it's actually employees of organizations that are seeing other people logging in and they're just not very nice people and they're gaining access to your personal information that way um, th th it's relatively small numbers you know these people wouldn't be targeting thousands of people or hundreds of people they're very likely to just be targeting one or a handful of people but it's always something to be cautious of um, if you feel somebody's lurking behind you at whatever you, wherever you're at an airport or somewhere public in a coffee shop or even at work and it's somebody you don't know just basically don't enter your password and and uh, username and password into a system where you feel you could be watched somehow it's just not a great idea so the next one is an odd one it's called um, spidering um, and it's I, I've been guilty of this one myself actually uh, spidering basically is where um, an organization will use a password and uh, usernames that are related to the industry in which they work in or their business themselves so for instance you know, say if I I was really stupid and I with my um, bits, bytes and bobs website, I could say, you know, 3B admin and then the password would be um, bits, bytes, bobs, or, you know, something really ridiculous or even, you know, YouTube 123 as a password. You know, those are odd things because it's related to what my business does, what I do and therefore you know it's relatively easy to guess oddly i've you know read about some companies small companies that would just simply use their company name you know or or small variations or if um you know like the 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 managing director or the ceo's name you know it's it's really surprisingly common how many organizations because they can't be bothered to secure it down and they know that quite a few people will be using it they want to make it easy to share but unfortunately by making it easy to share it then makes it easy for someone to guess and that leads us on to our final one which of course is simply guessing you know if you know something about someone um say you know we can just go on social media and you can gain a bit of information about someone a lot of people are quite open in terms of you know where their anniversaries are their birthdays uh who their friends and family are so if you combine all that information and you know which social media platform forms they're on because you can see them on there because that's where you're gaining your information from you can then use that to guess what that person's username and password is likely to be it is surprisingly staggering how many people give so much information away freely through social media media without actually realizing that this is a publicly available platform that people can just go to and see this information quite freely and then use that to either gain access to that very same platform that you're using or something else that's commonly used by people that use those platforms and then they would then simply guess based on the information they've gained from the information that you've freely given through social media so be careful what you let out so those are the sort of top 10 ways that hackers gain access to your information online and guess your passwords just be very careful and mindful of these techniques if you know of other techniques or if you've been hacked yourself how did you deal with it how did you find out um, 
what do you use and what techniques do you use to secure your accounts but let me know your thoughts don't forget to subscribe don't forget to click the bell to be alerted when I've done some more videos and give me a thumbs up that would be lovely and thanks again for watching and I hope this has been really helpful to you see you again next time take care bye bye